Okay, guys, um, I'm making this wind spinner thing. Um, I've heard them called um, kinetic sculptures on YouTube, but this ain't going to be no sculpture. So, what I've started off with is some copper tube, 15mm. Uh, Yes, I actually had to buy this. Um, although I didn't think it was too bad. Ten foot was uh, seven pound twenty-five, which, considering how much copper is these days, wasn't too bad. I'm going to cut it up into about foot lengths because I want ten blades on this. So ten foot should be about right. Actually, I'm going to do them three hundred mil because it's actually come up at uh, the 3 metre length, so we'll do 10 at 300. Could do with a finer blade on there, really. I'm getting them roughly, it's you know, within a few mil. Doesn't have to be on. So I'm going to go on, go on and cut the rest of them. Well, there's half of them. And what I want to do is split them down the middle. I want to unfold them. So what I'm going to use for that is uh, my little sp split slitting saw. Just a one mil disc. Makes pretty light work of it. You do want to try and keep it down the middle. And it's fairly straight, fairly down the middle. And obviously, you don't want to go right the way through, otherwise, you'll end up with two holes. This isn't going to take me long. You can't squeeze it too tight in the vice. Yeah. I'll take them on to do the rest of those. Now what I want to do with this is actually open them up. Um, I want to unfold it, but as you can see, it ain't going anywhere. Even with this screwdriver in there, it's just really, really doesn't want to budge. Hardly moved. So, we're going to have to make us make life easy for ourselves. So what I'm going to do, heat this up about, I don't know what it is in degrees, but it's sort of a um, cherry red. I know on the camera it actually looks a lot hotter than it really is. Um, someone did tell me why, it's something to do with the camera picking up more of the infrared than our eyes do. So it actually looks a lot hotter than it is. But cherry red's about what you want. You see, slightly less than that is now, or what it appears. And then what you gotta do is quench it. Straight in the water. You see all the muck comes off it. And then you'll find that it opens up like butter. Really, really soft. Makes life so easy. Obviously, the more you work it, the harder it gets again. Your copper does work harden. But you can just keep repeating it. You just warm it up again. 
dunk it in the water and it's soft. So there you go. So now what I've got to do, level them all out and cut them out. So I've got this block of three by one and a half clamped to the vise, uh, not the vise, the anvil. And I'm going to use this little rubber mallet that I use for my shoeing just to level them all out. Don't have to be too accurate. I'm just getting it good enough to lay my template on. Ready to cut them out. Doesn't take long. There you go. Done. I want them to be sort of leaf shaped ish. So I've made this little pattern just out of a bit of Zintec that was lying about that came off a it was sort of some protection on a bit of sheet. It's always handy to hang on to stuff like that. I'm just going to lay it on here and just scribe around it. Yeah, same the other end. Again, you don't have to be too accurate. You can always tidy it up afterwards. See, the more accurate you are to start with, the less you have to do. Now you can just see the lines. And I'm just going to use a pair of tin snips. Cut it out. You could probably cut this with scissors now. It's so soft once you've uh, heated and quenched it. Try and keep to the line. As near as you can. And so it's less tidying up Whip the other ends off there you go done just going to run the grind around the edge just take the rough bits off very gently I don't want it to catch up right now next job um, they are very flimsy, very flimsy. So I want to put a bit of strength into it. So what I'm going to use is this bolster, just a small one, which I've taken the edge off. I've rounded it off so it's not sharp anymore, so it's not going to cut right through this copper. As I say, it's very soft, it would cut through pretty easy. I just want to dent it rather than cut it. Obviously doing it on the wood is pushing the, the copper into the wood, again stopping it cutting, but putting like a vein down it. There goes the hammer. And that's it, that's all you need. Doesn't need a lot. Nothing fancy. See I've made a bit of a meal of that but it doesn't matter and you can see how much stronger that is already just with that rib down it I'm going to use this rubber mallet again because I want to put some shape into it I want these leaves to be sort of not semi-circular but have a good bit of shape in them I'm just going to beat this round into the wood so if you try and bend it by hand and just bend it into a sort of a semicircle, it'll just crease. Just keep creasing. So you really need to beat it round. There's probably a, an easier way of doing this, and I'm sure someone will tell me. Sandbag, perhaps. But that's what you've got to keep doing. Keep beating it, beating it, beating it until they come round to your desired shape. Right, well I've done them all now, um, and I've now got to somehow 
figure out a way of fixing something onto them to fix to a hub. It's going to go in this end here. I think what I'll use is some stainless steel. I've got some quarter stainless. So I'm going to cut off bits about four inches long, put a bit of shape in them, and then somehow, because brazing isn't my strong point, fix them to these. So what I'm going to do, because I'm doing thick to thin, I'm going to put a bit of braise actually on the copper first. Okay, it warm. So it's not as hot as it looks. Although I have got it a bit hot there and burnt the edge off. It's, it's looking much warmer than it actually is. A bit of brass. I'm going to do the same to the bit of stainless. Obviously, you can get this much hotter on its own than you could if you were trying to put the two together and just braise them together, sort of in one operation. I'm sure there's some smart people out there that could do that. I say brazing isn't my strong point. Um, so I thought this would probably be the easiest way. Put a bit of brass on the stainless. Flux doesn't seem to want to make it run but it's sticking. There you go. Again, it's not as hot as it looks. Now the idea is lay one on top of the other, heat the stainless and hopefully the excess heat will melt the brass on both and it will stick together. That's the theory anyway. I should have moved the camera around, you can't really see very well but it's actually worked. See that it's stuck together. Let's just quench that out. And there you can see it's not pretty, and I have burnt the edge off the copper, but it's stuck, and I'm going to be cleaning them up anyway. So I've done them all. And the brazing got much better as I went on, although it's still not pretty, but it went much easier the more I did. And this is the basic pattern I'm looking for, but I'm going to have two lots. This one going one way and then the other side will be going the opposite way and hopefully as they spin in opposite directions they'll cause quite a nice pattern. I've yet now to figure out the hub, get some bearings, so in part two, I'll hopefully show you how it all goes together. Thanks for watching.